In today's video, we'll be exploring a component called extend curve. What's useful about this component is that using this in conjunction with other uh, components, we can do a lot of fun things as well as um, making it simple to develop a few, a few structures like domes and things like that where a connection uh, goes from point to point and you need to extend uh, the connection. So I can show some of those examples, but let's start with a very simple uh, way to show this component. And that is I'll bring in a interpolated curve and I'll just start here and just create a curve like this. And what I'll do is I'll bring this into Grasshopper. So I'll go here, bring in a curve component. I'll select this curve, then I'll right click here, go to set one curve. Now I can take this and I can hide it here inside of Rhino. What I'll do now is I'll plug in this curve into the extend and automatically you're not, it's not going to work. So it's not going to have anything as a default. So let's go here from zero less than 10, from zero to 10. And let's plug in five here. Oh, actually five is going to go in the start. Now I'll explain what type does in a second, but as you can see, it doesn't do anything unless you plug in an end value. So even if you make a copy here and you have this at zero, that is what you need to extend the curve. And you can see down here that it takes that curve and it extends it. So this is the original. And that is the extension. To explain that better, in a better way, let's go here to endpoints. And when I plug in that curve into the endpoints, you'll see that depending on the way you drew the curve, this is either going to be the start or the endpoint. Then with the extension here at the start, and then here at the end. This is useful um, for many different things. Uh, but one of the things that sometimes uh, what I've caught myself trying to do is trying just to get this little segment. One way to do that is, or before that, let's take a look at the types. So when I hover over this or right click on it, there's different ways that you can set the extension type. There's line, which means it's going to be a straight line, arc, which will create uh, a segment of a circle and then smooth which is more of the continuation of using the interpolated curve or a NURBS curve so there's different ways of doing this depending on what effect you want and as you can see when you do arc it rounds it when you do line it makes it straight and when you do smooth it continues it and smooths it out so let's actually increase the number of this and we'll give it a maximum value of 50. It's a little much, but we won't use them all. And as you can see, it continues curving it in. So sometimes that's not exactly what we want. And if I go here to arc, a little bit different and kind of continues going like that which is cool and then here with line you'll see that it'll go in a straight line okay so with that let's bring in the way that i get the end segments is i can go to end points again for this one and i'll connect the start points and endpoints. So I'll go to line, start point, then I'll make a copy of this and do the same thing for the endpoint and this endpoint. As you can see, these two are now separate curves than this. So we I can actually hide this. We can increase this and see that we have this separate to this and separate to this. Um, let's decrease this. 
and let's create a path. So in, inside of Rhino, I'll type in show to bring back this curve. And I'll use this interpolated curve. Go to the midpoint. And I'll create curve on something like this. I'll go here to curve. Set one curve. Now we can hide this again. We can do a sweep one. We'll use this as the section or as the rail and these, this as a section and then this one as a section. Or actually copy this one and do this one as a section. So as you can see, we can change these separately if we want to. And also the types, we can say from zero to two. And this way, change the type if we were, if we wanted to. So with that being said, uh, let's move on to the next example, which I am going to create a quick uh, design and show you how I use it for developing a uh, wireframe design that has um, a connection in between. All right, for this example, I'll be using another interpolated curve. I'll rotate this around using the screen axis. And I'll take this and extrude it out using the gumball. Now with this, let's bring it inside of Grasshopper. Oh, let's go here into surface. And let's go to set one surface. We can hide this. Oh. Or control H. Now that we have this surface, let's create some random points on it. So the easiest way to do that is go to populate 3D, which is the cloud that applies point to any object. Now I'll definitely decrease the count to something like 25. And I'll connect all of those points using mesh. De la une. Use those points, and we can use this surface. Actually, we don't need to use that. Now that we have this, let's extract the mesh edges. So let's go to edges. It's going to be mesh edges. And let's hide everything else. So let's say that this is going to be our design. We can actually add more points um, to the outside to make it look more like the form, but that's not the, the idea for this. Um, let's say you wanted to develop this design. One of the things that would happen is when you cut the strut or the structure, you're actually going to need to have more than just from connection to connection, because that's actually the perforation dimension of where you're going to perforate for the connection. So what I like to do is plug in both the interior and naked curves into one um, curve component. So we know for sure that everything is here and we don't have to worry about two outputs here. Now we can take that to the extend command and extend it by let's say two and a half inches or two inches or an inch and a half. And we can plug in at the start and at the end. And so this is how uh, you would actually do it. Here's the thing. If this design's a little bit small, um, these connections wouldn't be that overlapping, but as you can see, they could create some other cool effects um, that we don't really think about. And here's the cool thing. We can do the same thing that we did on the other one, 
which is get the endpoints of both of these and create a line between the start and the end. And we can have just the connection if you wanted to create some cool, some other cool effects, right? And we can add and subtract points this way. So many things that can be done. This is just a little bit of how this can be used. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of different applications, and I'd love to hear if you have any other ways of using this component. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you found that interesting, and I hope to see you next time.